Hi guys, and welcome back to another Retro RPG. And this is a bit of an odd one, because as I said in my vid last video, that the poll went really weird. You see, this week it was a winner of the losers poll, where the five games which lost in previous polls and got knocked out got one final chance to have a video made on them. And when I log into my RPG Gamer account and look at the results in the poll, I see 81 votes and Sword and Fist won. But when I log into my personal account, I can see 84 votes, and it was a tie between Sword and Fist and Masterbook. So I did Sword and Fist in the last video, and I'm doing Masterbook in this video, because it all bent a bit weird. But let's go over to the desktop and have a look at Masterbook. So this is the Masterbook role-playing game. It came out from West End Games in 1994, and... It's a rule system, so like Dungeons and Dragons, it doesn't come with a setting. It was sold as a book by itself, but this particular one is from within one of the games which it was used as a rule system for. You see, West End Games did like licensing movies and television series for role-playing games that had a lot of success with Star Wars and, of course, Ghostbusters, and they went on to try and repeat that. So... Masterbook was the rule system for their proprietary Blood Shadows games and Necroscope, but was for the licenses of Raiders of the Lost Ark, so Indiana Jones, um, Species, what else, Tank Girl, Tales from the Crypt, I'm sure there's others which I'm forgetting, but a lot of licenses went through this. So they would come with the world books, so um, the Indiana Jones or Species or Tank Girl or whatever world books, and this would be the rule system book which would come in it. Now we can tell this is it, because although the front cover is very, very black, in the version sold independently, it did actually have some text on the back cover, whereas this is totally blank. It is the blackest of black books, and I love having it. Now, I don't know which game this came out of. I bought it on eBay fairly recently. Um, I'd wanted Masterbook for a while, I saw it come up at a good price, and I bought it thinking it was a standalone book. However, as we can see from the back cover, it is not. So let's delve in. Now, the artwork is West End Games sort of standard of the time. It's very nice line art. They were very good at publishing stuff. Although, obviously, with their licensing, they tended to use a lot of photography from the movies. So the Indiana Jones book, T uh, Tank Girl, etc. would all have pictures from the movies. I'm trying to remember if the Men in Black one used Masterbook. I think it used a version of the D6 rules. I don't think it was a Masterbook one. Um, we've got the introduction to Masterbook here. Talking about what is a role-playing game, what is a game universe, what is role-playing. Um, what do I do in a role-playing game? Talks right through an introduction to role-playing. Then we're into the basic rule overview. Now, oh, character creation. Now, there's a lot of derived stats in here, but I don't think that's terribly bad because it's just a calculation you kind of do once. So we've got like movement here, which is agility plus agility plus strength divided by four for uh, running. For swimming, it's agility plus agility plus strength divided by six. But for climbing, it's strength plus strength plus agility divided by ten. And your long jumping strength plus strength plus agility divided by 10. So why they make you calculate those out separately when it's the same calculation, I don't know. But you can see that by high agilities, you can tend to run and swim faster. But climbing and jumping is strength related, which kind of is based on the D6 system as well, uh, where running is a dexterity skill and... Climbing uh, is a uh, strength skill. I was just thinking that it's climbing jumping, isn't it? So I contradict myself. We've got background generation. Talking about uh, different ways to generate your character. So um, one general focus or two specializations when you're rolling column one or column two as you create your backgrounds, your compensations. Then we're on to the rules. Um, 
So different types of successes, die rolls, what you've di rolled on your die, what bonuses you're getting. Interactive and attack skills. All the sort of standard stuff. We're going through skills here. We've got intimidation, various interactions, taunt trick, life uh, points, doing multiple actions, skills and skill use with the ma uh, masterbook skill list, with what attributes they come under. And the card deck, which is one of the things which I don't have, which does kind of uh, make a large point in Masterwork system, that you have a selection of cards that you draw from. And you've got enhancements cards. So the cards have the following effects. Action, plus one to all skill or tribute rolls for one round. Adrenaline, plus three to one dexterity, strength, endurance, toughness, or agility total. And so on and so forth. So you've got cards you can play which give you a bonus temporarily. You've also got subplot cards. So, alertness. Your character has a temporary sit sense. Games master discretion. Able to spot a previously unknown item, character, or clue. Campaign can be used to make a subplot permanent. Uh, personal stake. There are some deeply personal or close to the character during the adventure. If a character role plays this personal stake, the character gets two life points at the end. The adventure may be reduced to one life point if the card is played after the adventure is half over. And so on and so forth. You've got various bits which allow you to modify the stories around the players. Which is something that more modern role-playing games, I'm thinking of things like the Star Trek role-playing game, allow you to do now. Um, the Star Wars system from Fantasy Flight Unlimited, where you get the ability not only to succeed, but to twist the adventure towards the player's goals. Um, so Masterbook was doing that some decades ago. We've got uh, continuing to so sew special effects cards. We've got an example of the character sheet. Then we're on to the character creation section. Talking right through all the attributes. We've got strength, endurance, intellect, mind, charisma, confidence. Um, how to compare attributes. Um, assigning values. We've got derived attributes, so your toughness, your movement. We've got skill points, how the ads work. And I said the artwork's quite nice. There's not a load of it, but what is there's good enough. Allocating skill points, filling out character sheets, and then sample character sheet there. Diana Rourke. Creating uh, non-player characters, game master characters, background generation, um, various settings. So it deals with high fantasy or pop fiction, low fantasy, real world, science fiction. Got advantages. So you can be famous or wealthy. You can have equipment, contacts, luck. Just various advantages to the player. Special abilities, special effects. And I'm skipping through multiple pages here. We've got compensations. So age, bad luck, bigotry, debt. So as you get advantages, the character has to compensate them with disadvantages. And on the different columns, so various levels. This does seem pretty repetitive. Um, it would be far easier to have bad luck and then the various levels within it, instead of repeating the same ones over and over again. But I suppose it does allow you to easily find what your level does. Um, what have we got here? Additional rules, creating a species. Then we're on to the rules and difficulty numbers. Again, the pages sticking together. Um, modifiers, the die system, bonus chart, roll agains, the success chart. Uh, damage, so attacks and defense and damage effects. How armor works. Then we're into combat options. Uh, how to handle cover and concealment. Surprise. Things which don't come up all the time, but can be nice to use. Got damage options. 
So whether you're going to include like bleeding effects, so when somebody takes damage, whether they continue to take damage, knockout attacks, things like intimidation, how they work, con, charm, taunting, maneuvers, persuasion, hypnotism, how life points, basically hit points are dealt with, time and rounds, a nice selection of different eras. So we've got some sort of Pulp Fiction uh, 1920s here. You know, gangsters driving away and getting shot at. Pushing. So you can push things a little harder. You know, strain your character a little. Falling damage. Multiple actions. Combined actions. So multiple players working together. The value system. Skills and skill use. So we've got the agility skills here, detailing them and how they exactly work. All things from stealth through your dexterity, so handling all your weapons. Fairly similar to the D6 system where weapons come under your dexterity attribute. Perception, psionic manipulation. Obviously, depending on the world, these may or may not exist. I doubt psionic manipulation is a major thing in the Indiana Jones world. Got mind and charisma skills. Uh, confidence skills. Including faith and streetwise. So you can have ones where there are holy powers, so faith does things. Improving learning skills, so how experience works. The card deck itself, going into more details about. Enhancement cards, so adrenaline cards, double crosses, drama, hero, opponent fails. There's lots of ways you can alter the game slightly by playing your cards at dramatic times. Subplot cards, so players can create the storyline more about them, allowing your players who have a bit of imagination to help flesh out the game. Picture cards, cards and combat and interaction. Obviously the cards are a major part of the game here. Examples of card play. Creating and using special effects. The types of special effects. So things like magic, miracles, psionics. using them so if you're using a fireball it'll be counted as a special effect what else we got here lots and lots on building these because obviously this rule book while the things are fleshed out in the world books for each particular world. Masterbook itself is laying down the grounds for you to use these rules in any world that you want to create as well. We've got worksheets on how to make them up. Durations, area of effect. Um, variable effects, duration. Maintenance, so you can have a power which keeps going. Whether they need components, so like magic in Dungeons and Dragons. Concentration. We've got gestures and incantations. So making things li very much like magic in Dungeons and Dragons, if you like it that way. Um, so you title up on the, the effects at the end. Then we've got some basic equipment. So weapons, static weapons. Ranges, just detailing out sample shotguns, sample rifles. We'll probably have sample lasers in here somewhere. Maximum base damage, damage cap, and non lethal weapons. Missiles, armor, and what else we got here? Availability codes, so how difficult it is. And then we've got a games mastering section on world creation. Now, 
It's suggesting, once again, pulp fiction, high fantasy, low fantasy, real world, and science fiction. Or creating your own game setting. Although it instantly goes into a fairly pulp fiction look with adventurers fighting giant subiders in some Incan temples, South American uh, jungles, I guess. What sort of adventures can be played? Adventure creation. That's not Star Trek, honest. Um, going through how to structure an adventure from the introduction, the acts, the scenes, the events, to the climax and resolution. That's actually really good. And um, what have we got as well? Populating your adventures. So standard Games Master characters using grunts and archetypes. And then it wishes you luck at the end, which is kind of nice. And what have we got here? A sample fantasy cat warrior and a sample futuristic trader lizard map. So that is Masterbook. Um, as I said, it's a set of rules, but it's got some very interesting ideas in there. The master deck system of cards is very innovative for the time. It definitely is more like more modern role-playing games where the players get to build the storyline along with the Games Master instead of just taking part in a story that Games Master has prepared. And I like that a lot. I don't like that it's a separate deck that you have to buy separately. Really annoyed by that. I hate that, as I did with the Fallout dice the other week, where you've got to buy your special set of dice. But anyway, I think I've whisked on for quite long enough. So I'll end the video here. And so that was Masterbook. But for the next poll, we're going back to the survivors from the poll of the week before. So we've got GURPS China, which survived. We've got Strange Eons, a source book for Call of Cthulhu, which survived. And we've got Denver City of Shadows for Shadowrun, which also survived. Now they are joined by two newcomers, which is The Magic of Magnamund for the Lone Wolf RPG from 2004, and Bangkok Cesspool of the Orient, for Twilight 2000 by Games Designers Workshop from 1991. Now, Games Designers Workshop games always really do well in the polls. You love them, I love them, which is why I have so many in my collection. But we'll see, because you never know. Something else could catch your eyes, and it can be voted in. So, I guess we'll see next week. But, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment below, as it does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.